What is the point of increasing your value? Because increasing your value does two things primarily for guys. You increase your opportunities and you increase your options. Said so thank you to the Godfather for giving tech a, a shout out. Yeah, because increasing your opportunities right now, there are, there are people right now, the pandemic is making new millionaires. The, because they can't go into the office and because they have a particular skill set that lends to them being able to work in this digital landscape and become more effective at a distance. So to all my introverts, understand something. If you listen to what I tell you and just learn some of the basic things about EQ, you can separate yourself from your, your, uh, your coworkers and your competitors and, and fast track. That's what I did. That's what a lot of guys do. One of the key things in this whole high value thing is learning that you're going to have to sacrifice anywhere you go. You're going to have to invest in coaching. You're going to have to do crap jobs, work long hours, stop looking for the fast track quick. You're going to have to worry about the long, slow, deferred gratification. All the things you hear and any, anybody who's been successful will tell you a lot of these things. I'm going to pause it real quick because it sounds like he contradicted himself, right? He says, if you do X, Y, and Z, then you can fast track. Then the way the, the clip was edited, he says, stop trying to do the fast track. Take your time. So when he's speaking about taking your time, we're going to do some backwards planning. Some army shit. We're going to do some backwards planning. You know what the end goal is. So you're slowly working toward that goal, right? Then he says, stop trying to do the fast track. What Kevin is talking about is stop trying to take shortcuts. That's why he injected the getting a mentor, paying for coaching, doing different things like that. So you can progress. It's going to be a slow grind. It's going to be ugly. But the fast track, going back to his original comment, is when you're doing that work, you're going to move up quicker. When you're intentionally trying to skip steps, you, you take a misstep when you're trying to skip steps. Now you got to start all the way back over. So that fast track you were trying to take, you just started back over at zero. But if you do the right thing, eat those, you know, take those shit jobs, eat crap, all that. And you're taking those slow grinds. You're actually on the fast track. The, think the tortoise in the hare. The rabbit got so far ahead. He thought he was winning. He like, man, fuck it. I'm going to take a nap. And whether people keep saying, this is my dream. The only thing that comes to a sleeper is a dream. So now he laid down and rested. The tortoise just kept on going. I know this is on a child level, but it holds true in real life, real life application and execution. You're making those steady, those steady climbs, learning soft skills, learning how to interact with people, learning personality traits, even for people you don't like working with. But you get the job done. Now you're fast tracking because you're learning so much and you're able to execute. So I wanted to clear that up because I know somebody's going to hear it be like, he just contradicted himself. No, he did not. You got to think beyond what you're hearing. You, I need us to start thinking. You don't have to think like Kofi. I just need you to think in general. Think outside the box of what you just hear and be able to apply it. Take the things you've been through and be able to apply it when you're receiving this information. Agree or disagree. Be able to apply your life, your own lived experience. I'm going to let Kel keep on cooking, but I just had to clear that up. And trying to work around or do it for cheap or get over on somebody is the quickest way to make your name mud with people who could really help you. Because I will tell you, these guys talk. And if you think you're going to hustle somebody to like, oh, man, ah, uh, nah. So here's the thing. High value. So <clears throat> stay on track. Henry's high earners, not rich yet. That goes for men and women. And the difference between the Henry's and the previous generations, the previous generations were waiting to live life after retirement. These generations are wanting to live life now. The key is balance. The key is balance, in my opinion. You can still plan for the future and live a good life now. Because today, many people aren't getting married as early and they're not having as many kids. So it's different. But you got to realize the, the most important thing in high value is understanding 
time is the most important thing you have. Pause it again. Me and Broken Traditions, <laughs> me and BT were just sitting here talking about, damn, we didn't realize how quick time was going. <laughs> we really didn't. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, what's, what does it go by? Jamar. Jamar. Yeah. Ja his son, Jamar Cash Out. Go look up Nephew on YouTube. He's a rapper, right? And we looked at his first video, and I was laughing because I know what he looks like now. And I was laughing like, damn, this was his first video. This was a couple years ago. I was like, he looked like a fucking baby. He's still a baby. He's, him and my daughter are the same age. They're 19. He's 19 to five years. Yep. So, 19. Whatever. <laughs> They're babies now. But looking back at his older video, he really look, looks like a kid kid, right? And then we started talking about, again, where we were at. When BT first moved here, when, what I was doing when I first moved here, we did not realize how much, how fast time was going to move. The thing that helped BT, the thing that helped me, once again, work ethic. That's the common theme. But that's why I put, put out the question, where are you in life? It's not just about your financial position. It's not just about your relationship position. It's about your individual position. How do you see yourself? What do you see your life going from this point on? You can't do anything about the past. That's depression. When people are stuck in the past, that's depression. When you're so worried and concerned about the future, that's anxiety. You have to find a balance, just like KS just said. But the way to balance that is balancing your time. You can't cut these corners, but you can't be dragging your feet either. You can't just keep doing the menial stuff. You're going to have to get some coaching, mentoring. Again, another plug. Manosphere Conclave this weekend. I'm going to be there. Time is the most important thing you have. Um, money, resources, power, status, influence, network, gravitas. These are some components of increase. These are some components that you want to increase. Now, understand something. I'm an image consultant. I'm an image consultant. And yes, I am a successful guy because I've tried many things and I've failed a lot. But as an image consultant, I deal in reality. Reality, outcomes. I don't deal in theory and what could happen. You notice that a lot on my show. I'm always talking about outcomes, 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 reality. I don't deal in what could be or what should be. I don't deal in principled arguments. I'm, so in my world, things are very black and white, which makes gray which was what you see me wear a lot of times. Black, white, but most of the time you see me in a gray pinstripe suit. If you watch the Game of Thrones, I'm gonna give you some ideas. Tywin Lannister, the House of Lannister, in the real world would have run that show. Pause real quick. If you're not a Game of Thrones fan, keep rocking with the content. Just hear what he's saying. J.R.R. Martin made that show to where, or, or the book to where he died. In the real world, they would have been the Medici's. They would have been the Roosevelt's, the Rockefeller's. They would have gone on and on and on. So I'm going to go into the alternate universe for the Lannisters. And I'm going to make them black. Because I'm black. I'm going to make them black. And we're going to call them the Lancasters. <laughs> no, we just call them the Lannisters. And they can still be white. It doesn't matter. But here's the point. Tywin Lannister was never trying to be the king. He was concerned about power. Power and influence. One thing that made Tywin powerful is he never sought the top job. Too many of you guys trying to be high value, you want to be the number one. You want to be a king, especially you black guys. You want to, you want to be the one out in front, and I'm sorry, the market gets to decide. The market gets to decide who's out in front, and there's only one lead singer. Think about the heart, five heartbeats. Everybody's fighting over the microphone. No, no, you want to control. You want to own the studio and the music and the masters. Damn, own the microphone. There's always some new star. Be the be the hand behind the throne or the ear of power. Tywin Lannister would have gone on and on and on and on in the real world, and that's the OG. That's a truly high value man. You know how he's a high value man? Because even as crazy as Joffrey was, King Joffrey, when Tywin Lannister spoke, Joffrey shut his sadistic self up. I'm going to pause it, kind of give an explanation for those that didn't watch. 
uh, Game of Thrones. So Tyron Lannister was a grandfather. He was like a lord. He made sure his kids were in positions of power. One of his kids was a knight. The other one was he was like a um, he was a player, <laughs> but he was good with money, highly intelligent. His daughter, he made sure that she married rich into other rich families because that's how it was done back in the past. Joffrey, the one that he just mentioned, was his grandson. Grandson throwed the fuck off, used to bitch and moan and cry all the time. But when his grandfather spoke, he knew to shut the fuck up. Joffrey ended up being the king, but the grandfather is the one that really ran the realm. He had the right connections to the right people. So Chaos is spot on when he says he was concerned about power and influence. Wearing a crown on your head don't mean shit. Don't mean nothing if you don't have the power and influence and respect and sometimes when necessary the fear that comes with being the king so i just wanted to point that out i keep telling y'all yes i'm a nerd but it's so much good information in some of these shows some of them game of thrones is one of them house of dragons is another one the the prequel to game of thrones it's so much good information and applicable knowledge in real life that can be garnered from these shows so make sure you start paying attention to the stuff that you watch, that you're consuming. And I don't just mean the food, the clothes and things like that. You're a consumer of my content. I want to put out good content. Y'all hold me accountable. I'll hold y'all accountable. Me and BT, I joke about him being troll all the time, but I would not be here if it wasn't for this brother to my right. You got to have solid people around you. And I'll you get the ring light tonight. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Look. He told, he told me to bring out the ring light. I was like, no, it's not going to get dark till later on, but it got dark a little bit earlier than I anticipated. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Let's keep on going. Tywin Lannister was so cold that when Joffrey as king, I am the king, and da 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 and going off, and da da he said... I mean, he was roasting Tywin, right? He was he was capping on him. He was he was calling him all kind of sissies and fags and and this and that and punks and wearing purses and all this other kind of stuff. And what Tywin Lannister said, I think the king is tired. That was it. I am not tired. I think the king needs some rest. And then every then his mother, the, the queen, the maester jumped up. Every powerful person in that kingdom at that table moved on Tywin Lannister saying, I think the king is tired. Maester, maybe some essence of nightshade to help him sleep. Tywin Lannister put the king to freaking bed. King had the mic right. Tywin understood power, and Joffrey understood power. And power lays where the people put it. Joffrey was the king, but nobody ever mistook where power was. I had to pause it real quick. Go ahead and give KS this. Got it! Hotter than fish grease! And I liken that to a lot of these dudes running the streets, getting all the attention, getting all the applause and praise and stuff in our community, but they have no pool. These are they, their streets. These are their blocks. They don't own shit. Again, look at these shows, look a little bit deeper, sprinkle some black on it, understand what's going on in your community and what's going on around you as an individual.